Hello, Fibro Warriors. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, I am really, really excited to be here today. I have a special guest with me, and I mean super special. You're going to absolutely, if you don't know her, you're going to absolutely love this human being. If you already do know her, then you already love her. So uh, if you don't know me, speaking of which, I'm Nick Demas, director of Invisible, and I'm so grateful that we're at, just before coming on in the green room, we call it the green room, the backstage, uh, my guest and I were talking about how it's been quite a journey to get here. And we're so excited to be able to finally begin to share the film with you and parts of it. We're, we're, we're dripping it out, as they say. Uh, and also the, the people that made the film and the community, and which is really the community. The community made this film, and we are really, really excited to share members of the community with you each and every week so that you can get to know them. They're going to be amazing resources for you. So without further ado, without further ado, without further ado, I want to welcome to the stage Tammy Stacklehouse. Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so honored to have you here with us. Um, you've been a part of this film from the very, very beginning. I have to say, yeah. you were the very first expert that I interviewed for the film. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. And the interesting thing about it is that we did, we were doing like a pre-interview on Zoom. Look at us on Zoom. We, and this was 2015, you all. 2015 and we were we were like ahead of the curve Tammy we were ahead of the curve on yes Zoom. we were <laughs> but it was supposed to be a pre-interview but we loved it so much that it ended up in the final film <laughs> I wondered about that because I I mean you know first of all seven years is a long time I'm like I don't live in that house anymore <laughs> I don't even live in that city anymore. That state anymore. <laughs> yeah, a lot changes in seven years and yet a lot remains the same. Yeah. Right? And that's what I want to dive into a bit of how can you make that change? How can you make a change within you as somebody with fibromyalgia? And you were the perfect person to go to for that question. Oh, Melissa Swanson is here. Hey, Melissa, great to have you. And anybody else who's here, please give us a hi, a hello, a wave, something in the chat. And if you have any questions for Tammy, please put them in the chat and we will um, discuss them. Even if you're on the replay, you can give us a hashtag replay and we'll come back after and answer any questions if you're not here right now, live, in the moment. Uh, okay, Tammy, first and foremost, for anybody out there who doesn't know you, why don't you tell them who you are, what you do, and who you serve? Sure. So um, my name on the screen, Tammy Stacklehouse. Um, I am the founder of the International Fibromyalgia Coaching Institute. Prior to that, at the point that this particular uh, interview Nick was just talking about, um, I was just coaching people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I've written two books on fibromyalgia. I host the Fibromyalgia podcast, so there's lots of resources out there. But partway along the way, I realized I couldn't help everybody on my own, so mm -hmm. I started teaching other people how to do the work that I do. So primarily, of course, we work with fibromyalgia patients. Um, fibromyalgia coaching is kind of a cross between life coaching and health coaching and health education. Um, it's a little more than just uh, like a life coach or a health coach you'd go see because we really are experts in fibromyalgia. We know about the treatments, we know about the research, and we can help guide you to the resources you need, the providers you need, getting the treatments you need. Of course, we're not doctors, right? So we're not actually doing the diagnosis or the treatment, but we can educate you on what your doctors are telling you to do and help you find the right things for you. Yeah, that's, that's amazing that you, how did you decide <clears throat> I need to be a fibromyalgia coach? Like this is, you created this, this world. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm a coach. I, as you know, I coach people. I, I'm a creative business coach, which is very specific, but it's not like I like created the, the form. How did that come to you? Like, what was the inspiration? It kind of, you know, evolved over time, right? So I, I clearly was not a little girl that said, hey, I'm going to grow up someday and be a fibro coach. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> 
so yeah, you know, I, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia in 2007. I had been married about six months when I got my diagnosis. And, you know, for the first few years, it was really hard. I filed for social security disability, like the whole nine yards, right? And then in late 2008, early 2009, my doctor introduced me to a health coach in her office. Mm -hmm. And it was like magic. All of a sudden, I'm now figuring out how to do the things that she's been telling me to do for the last two years, right? And then after my experience with my coach, who, to be honest, didn't know anything about fibromyalgia, I realized that I wanted to do that kind of work and help other people. And at first I just started off like most people do, you know, just as a general health coach. But I realized that like there was magic when I was talking to somebody who had fibromyalgia because of what I went through in my own journey, all the things I learned. I'm a person who likes to do the research and figure out the science and like all of yeah. that stuff. Right. So when I finally, you know, started working with other people with fibromyalgia, it was like, I don't know, it was a burning bush moment where it was like, oh, the angels are singing. This is what you're supposed to do with your life. And so kind of just took off from there. And how effective do you find coaching to be for people? Obviously, you must or you wouldn't still be in it all these years. <laughs> right. <laughs> what is the difference that you see? Speaking of, you know, where somebody's at to where they can where they can get to. Right. So interesting, you should ask. There have actually been, um, there's actually one study I'm aware of who looked at the use of health and wellness coaching for treating fibromyalgia. With fibromyalgia studies and in doctor's office, and we do as coaches, we use a tool called the Fibromyalgia Impact Questionnaire. And it asks you things like um, about your various symptoms, how severe or mild they are. It asks about your ability to do certain tasks like going grocery shopping or vacuuming or brushing your hair or whatever it is. And, um, and then a couple of like mental health type questions. And the score on that kind of tells us, gives us sort of a measure of your fibromyalgia, right? So are you mild, severe, moderate, you know, mm -hmm. using that measuring stick, the study that was done, again, these were not fibromyalgia coaches. These were just health and wellness coaches. They were not teaching their clients about fibro specific topics, but they were talking about like mindfulness, healthy sleep, you know, general health, things like that. And those, those patients in that study, they uh, improved their fibromyalgia impact questionnaire by, I don't know, it was like 44% or something. Wow. Like so cut it almost in half. And I will tell you that as fibro coaches, we can do better right? Because we've got that fibro specific piece. So it's not at all uncommon for me to see graduates from my training programs, from the beginning of the training to the end of the training, improve 50%, even in the 70s. I've had several people who've improved by 70, 74%. That's a lot. <laughs> that a lot. That's a huge amount. You know, that there's always that thing. I, I always say, if you want to really know something, go teach it. Right? Oh yeah. Like if you yeah. dive in to be a, to be a coach or be a teacher, the process of that is going to be so significant for you. Right? Mm -hmm. Like yes, 40 some percent, but 70 is insane. That's incredible, Tammy. For sure. For sure. And you know, I talk about coaching being my secret weapon, right? Mm -hmm. Um today my fibromyalgia is in remission and I know I would not be here if I wasn't a coach, because every day I'm talking to people about what they need to do every day. I'm talking about like, this helps, that helps. And it helps to remind me, but it also kind of keeps me accountable, right? <laughs> because you have to be a certain kind of person to, to like teach it and not do it. Right. And that's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I have more integrity than that. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love that, that you're, you're walking the talk, basically. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, and by that nature, it's almost holding you accountable. Exactly right. Exactly right. And, and so let's talk about this idea of, of remission, because I know that th this can be a um, hot button, ding, 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 <laughs> topic in within the community. Yeah. Um, that, you know, there is no cure, but that you can manage it, right? Is, is, is that what you mean by, by remission that you've, and able to find a way to manage it? 
So I will first say that that is not my word. That is what my doctor told me, right? Okay. So when she, we were sitting there, we were talking about something completely different. Like we were talking about my thyroid labs or something like that. And she says, by the way, I, I consider your fibromyalgia to be in remission. And she just like goes on talking about the thing, right? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it took me months to be able to talk about that because I didn't know how I felt about that. Right. right. Like my whole, my whole life is about fibromyalgia. And so like, well, if I'm in remission, does like, who am I now? Right. <laughs> kind of like when you get the fibro diagnosis, who am I now? Yeah. Um, so and also, to be totally honest, I was afraid of that hot button you were talking about. You know, what What if I do talk about this? Not everybody is as fortunate as I am to have their fibromyalgia in remission. So in looking at what that means, um, I have not had any fibromyalgia pain of any kind since New Year's Eve uh, 2018. That's phenomenal. Yeah. That's and the, and if I go back be, before that, then it was in the summer of 2017 when I was on a trip and staying in a bad bed in London. Um, but yeah, I mean, so that's, that's a big piece. You that's know? huge. That's really big. Yeah. Can I ask you, what do you see? I mean, look, I know that there are so many different, um, symptoms, but is there something that you see that's really recurring in most people that can be managed that people currently aren't necessarily managing that coaching can help? Oh yeah. So, all of it. No, <laughs> um, just starting with pain. I think, I think when you have a chronic pain condition, whether it's, you know, migraines, headaches, back pain, you know, whatever it is, fibromyalgia, we get so used to what that feels like that mm. sometimes we start to accept things as our normal, even if we know yeah. it's not normal, um, we begin to accept that, you know, this is just the way life is. And our doctors don't really help with that because they're sometimes literally telling us this is just the way your life is now. And yeah. there's actually a lot that can be done even for pain, managing pain. And I'm not talking about pain medications either. Uh, yeah. I would say that the things that actually impact most of my clients are things that they can do for themselves. And it's, you know, it's the stuff nobody wants to hear about, right? It's the self-care, it's the pacing, it's the how you treat yourself, how you treat your body. Um, but there, there are a lot of things there, um, a lot of supplements that people can use, a lot of just uh, life hacks, if you will, right? Like maybe doing things a little bit different or um, breaking things down, giving yourself a little bit more rest, just a lot of stuff that somebody who actually lives in a fibro body and who has gone through this can give you those kinds of tips that your, your doctor and other people just can't, can't give you because they don't know. And that's what I love about your coaching Institute, because yeah. talk about people walking the talk, right? Like they've <laughs> lived it. So it's, it's, it's not like you said, some general sort of health coach. It's actually a very specific to fibromyalgia for people with fibromyalgia from people with fibromyalgia, yeah. which is not just similar to this film. So I'm going to pivot now to the film to talk about your experience in the film. Yeah. What for you was the most interesting thing about the film? about creating the film? Well, you know, honestly, um, just the process of it, like watching everything that's happened over the last seven years, you know, this is my first inside behind the scenes peek at, you know, making this kind of a, of a thing, you know, I mean, I, I make, I do podcasts, I do lots of like interviews and things like that, but it's a whole different deal. And just watching how, how you guys would, just respond to, okay, we, we filmed this, this came out. Now we're going to like maybe change a little bit with the direction we're going where we started is not where we ended. Right. And so that statement, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so that to me was just honestly the most fascinating part, because I think if you'd asked me before I was part of this, you know, you would just kind of like, you'd have your script, you would go, you would film, it would like, 
you know, beginning to end pretty linearly. And it's not like that. <laughs> well, in a documentary, you know, the interesting thing about documentary, one of the fun things about it is that you follow the story, they say, right? So right. where the story leads you versus, yes, you have an idea of where you want to go. And then you follow the story. And definitely the story went a completely different direction than we originally had planned. And that's what's really cool about it, but also why sometimes it takes some time. That and the fundraising aspect of a documentary, which uh, thank you to everyone who donated. Thank you to everyone who invested in this. Thank you to everyone who was involved because it, it took a village, as they say. <laughs> well, you know, that's such a fibro thing, right? Because I, I jokingly say all the time that, you know, it takes a it takes a village to keep Tammy functional, right? Uh, you know, all of my various providers and, you know, my coaches and things like that. So I think it's very, very appropriate that, <laughs> that it took a village to, to make our film. But, you know, I am so glad that things did go in all these different directions and that we hadn't just made a film in a year or whatever the original ambitious thing was, because it's a much better story being told over time and just like watching things progress in a way we couldn't have done if it had been much. You know, no, there's no like way that. this story could have happened if it hadn't been organic like this, if it hadn't yeah. taken the time that it needed as a creative person, I know that, and it's so funny because this is stuff that I tell my my clients all the time, of course, but then when you have, when it's reflected back to you in the mirror, you're like, oh, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> walking the talk. <laughs> a creative baby, we call them babies, right? We have babies, creative babies. You don't ask a baby to be something that it isn't. Mm -hmm. And that a baby doesn't grow they grow in their own time. Yes, in general, a baby grows at a certain rate, but some babies are faster. Some people talk quicker. Some baby, you know what I'm saying? And so same yeah. with these creative projects that they all take on a life of their own and that they all do it in the way and the time in which they're meant to do it so that the world may be even ready for them. You mm -hmm. know, timing is everything. And I think that that's been part of it is that, you know, this, as you well know, and everyone in the audience is very well aware of, fibro is not a, sexy topic. It's not something that people are like, ooh, let's get behind that, which is why the, the film is called Invisible. Not only is it an invisible illness, but as you all very well know, the community is invisible and we're trying to bring visibility to it. And so it's taken us this long to get there in order to do it effectively. Yeah. And we're, we're, you know, we're, let's, let's hope that this will, you know, level that up, as they say, rise up the platform for people like yourself to be able to stand on and really shout out the rafters for fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. I think this is something that our community is going to be so proud to be associated with. I think invisible tells such a, such an awesome range of what fibromyalgia can mean to somebody, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's me with my fibromyalgia and remission, right? Mm -hmm. But then there are other people in the film that that is far from the case. And I think that that's part of the magic, right? Showing that spectrum because all we uh, we're told so often that like, this is your new normal, you know, there's not much we can do. There's no cure, right? It's a very hopeless, uh, not much I can do kind of feeling. Um, but that's not true. And I'm glad that you guys really embraced that and are sharing that. But I also think that there's a lot in the film that people can relate to if they're not in that place yet. Yeah, I, I think it was important to me as the filmmaker that we showed the range, that mm -hmm. we didn't show one point of view that yeah. it was, again, made for, by, and from the community. And the community is a wide spectrum, uh, you know, of where they are on that pain spectrum, A, and on their idea of what fibromyalgia is and on what the options are. And we just really wanted to point to people, there are options and here's some resources, here's some ideas, here's some help, here's some, you yeah. know, just just so that people began to feel seen at, at whatever, whatever, wherever they are on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. That was and so It often feels like not much is being done, right? Because yeah. this isn't 
sexy and people no. don't talk about it, except those of us who are talking about it. Um, but I think often sometimes as patients, we do feel that invisibility, not just, you know, that our illness is invisible or sometimes we are, but just that like, there's nothing happening. Where's the research? Is anybody studying this? Are we trying to get any answers? And I think that's an, that is another thing that is so cool about this film, bringing in the people that you brought in is it like really does show that we're not on all on individual islands, <laughs> right? Like there are people out there who are, who are working on this and doing things and helping to, find ways for people to feel better, you know? And I think that that is, is going to give a lot of people a lot of hope. Yeah. And that was really interesting for me, honestly, as the filmmaker to meet with various experts, various doctors and get different perspectives, which was fascinating as somebody who was, you know, my, while my mother has fibromyalgia, it was new to me, all the information. I was learning the information uh, uh, over the course of the seven years. I learned a lot of new information. Let yeah, me tell but. You. But, but getting the different opinions and different ideas, even within the medical community, even within the experts yes. in the film was fascinating, Tammy. It was absolutely fascinating. And I wanted to make sure that that was in the film as well, that there were various perspectives. So for me, it was important to get the information out so that people could feel visible rather than this is the way, this is the only way. No, because there is no only way that yeah. I can tell, at least from, from what I experienced. Right? Yes, yes. And there was a brilliant moment of editing in the film because, you know, of course, I've had the privilege of seeing the whole thing. But there's this brilliant moment of editing where there are literally two medical experts giving exactly the opposite answer <laughs> to, to a question, right? Oh, yeah. And yeah. and it just illustrates in a way that you couldn't have actually said why this is so hard for patients, right? Why it's so hard to get concrete answers, why it's so hard to get a diagnosis, why it's so hard to get treatment when the experts don't even agree, right? Like then what? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And that comes back to that needing to sort of figure it out on your own. Right. And, and, and with that help of a coach who has, you know, years of knowledge, experience, et cetera, in navigation with various clients, because it manifests so differently in everyone. So, right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's the, I was thinking about this last night, knowing I was going to be talking to you, um, you know, peer support is so important, right? And being in a community of people who get you, right? Other people who have gone through what you're going through and who understand at least a little bit what life is like for you in your shoes. But sometimes you know, support groups and things like that can sometimes feel a little bit like the blind leading the blind, right? Because yeah, we know what it feels like to be like this, but we don't necessarily have all the knowledge and the expertise that someone, you know, like a, a doctor or medical expert would have. And I think that's where fibro coaching can kind of help fill that gap. We are people who have walked in your shoes, but we're also bringing along with that, like you said, all of that expertise right? So when you are trying to figure out what's going to work best for me, if you're just talking to a friend, they might not be able to tell you all of the options available, right? And yeah. so you're just kind of, you know, picking from what you already know about, which is great, but there's usually so much more. So right? much more. Yeah. So much more. Yeah. To explore, to try, to make work for you. Hey, Martha, yes, indeed, it, this will be on the, the page, on the invisible page for you to view later. Absolutely. We know that, you know, 9 a.m. Pacific, <laughs> noon Eastern, and what is it in Great Britain? What is it in Australia? We don't, you know, whatever. Whatever time it is, you know, wherever you are, it may not be the optimal time for you. So it should sit on the page for you to come back to as a resource and look at. Uh, plus, Absolutely go check out Tammy's Fibromyalgia podcast. So much information, great information there. Check her out. Speaking of which, Tammy, how can people come coach with, with you or uh, become a coach with you or coach with one of your coaches? 
Yes, absolutely. So the easiest way to find a coach is our find a coach page, which is just find a fibrocoach.com. Um, super easy. There's a, an application to fill out that just tells us a little bit about you so that we know all, a little bit of your story going in. Uh, and then you can choose whether you want to work with me or one of our certified coaches. We also have the option to meet with students. And, you know, just like if you were to go to a massage school or a dental school or something like that, you know, you're trading the, the cost for experience. Um, but all of those students are actually in a practicum with me right now. So they're people that I meet with weekly. So uh, it can be a really it can be a good option for people who have limited funds. Um, we also have some scholarships available. But if you have a more complicated case, I would recommend not going with a student <laughs> because they are still learning, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then if you're interested in becoming a coach yourself someday, um, the easiest way is the Institute website, which is just fibromyalgiacoachinginstitute.com. And that has all the information out there. Good. Melissa, thank you so much for posting that. I really appreciate it. And Melissa is a grad of your program, yeah? So mm -hmm. love, love, love having you here. Um, Michelle McDonald, and for anybody else, the movie will be available. Our, we're premiering, and this is sort of what I was going to end with. So how perfect is this? Good timing. Michelle McDonald. Thank you so much. <laughs> is uh, premiering December the 9th. December the 9th, and there'll be information about how you can be involved in that premiere, and then it will be out after that at release. But December the 9th, save the date. More information coming very, very soon about how you can be involved in the premiere, see the film, et cetera. Uh, Tammy, thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, how, on social, how do people find you on the socials? I am Fibro Coach pretty much everywhere. <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, just at Fibro Coach. Across the board. And I am yeah. at the Nick Demas across the board also. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you name it. I'm at Venic Divas. Uh, <laughs> I will be back, you all. Thank you, Tammy. So, so, oh, so. Thank you so much. Here. So, and yeah. for all your support of the film, these seven years for being an incredible subject in the film, as well as today. Um, great interviewer, as always. I just adore you. You know that I do. And I love, love, love spending time with you. Can't wait to see you in New York for the premiere. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, I will be back, not next week, because believe it or not, I'm traveling to see my family, my mother, who is featured in the film, I'm going to go spend some time with her. So I will not be here next Monday. But after that, the following Monday, I'll be back with another special guest. And I can't wait to see you all then. Thank you so very much. Have a great day. Thank you, Fiber Warriors. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, everyone that was alive and on the replay. See you next time. Thanks, friends. Bye. <laughs> Dance out.